Welcome to Growing Spaces. I'm Dana. We're here in the 15-foot growing dome. It is February 18th and last week I walked in here and actually noticed that we had some new visitors. So recently we have had some aphids come into the greenhouse so I wanted to talk a little bit today about why they're here to visit and what we can do to manage them um, and how we might decide to manage them. So aphids overwinter on trees outdoors as um, as eggs and then they will patch when it starts to get warm and it's been a really warm winter here in Pagosa Springs and then once they're ready to move to your vegetable garden their primary food source during most of the warmer months spring summer and fall um, some of them will um, develop wings it's not genetic it's a hormonal change and they develop wings they come and find your vegetable garden so here we have a bunch of aphids now and the question is what do we do about it? What we're going to talk about today is management rather than eradication. There really um, is no way to get rid of them and that's okay because they're a natural part of the ecosystem that is happening in your garden. However, um, there are some things to consider when you're thinking about aphid management and aphid damage to your garden. So it's kind of a chicken or the egg question whether or not the aphids come first or whether or not the plants become stressed first. Um, there are a number of things, so aphids are more likely to um, be attracted to stressed plants because they're easier to feed on. However, once they become stressed enough because the aphids take out all of the sugars um, from what's called the phloem of the plant, um, those are sugars that the plant's producing using, using photosynthesis and sending them down to the roots. So the aphids tap into that phloem, um, kind of like you would with a maple syrup tree, and they are sucking out all those sugars. So essentially you want to think about a few things when you're considering aphid management. One um, is your soil poor because that's already going to make your, um, your plants have reduced vigor. Um, you also want to talk about and think about overcrowding which is actually something that's happening here with these turnip greens if you want to take a look. Another thing that can cause aphid problems is um, poor airflow. We're actually planning on adding another fan into this greenhouse in the next couple weeks here. Um, uneven or inconsistent watering can also stress plants and make them more susceptible to aphid infestations. Some people are really bothered by only a few aphids. Others, you know, have a higher tolerance for their presence. So it's kind of personal preference. I would say that I personally will remove plants that are covered in aphids. Um, other plants that have kind of a mint, like a medium amount on them or a pretty minimal amount, I'll just try some management methods. So, you know, I might spray them with an organic spray. I might just come out and squish them with my thumb if I have a little bit of extra time. Um, spraying them off with water actually does a decent job of at least getting them off of your plants. Um, they are soft-bodied insects, so that can sometimes damage them. Really, um, before you go about any management method, you just want to assess the damage. Once you've decided, hey, you know, this is kind of becoming a little bit of an issue, then you want to go about some different management methods, whether it be spraying the aphids off, using an organic spray, um, introducing beneficial insects. Lady beetles are one that we chose to use here. You can also do lace wings. Um, there's a lot of other beneficial insects that are a wonderful option for the garden. Um, a greenhouse is a good place to try them too because they tend to stick around better than if you introduced them outdoors. I know nobody likes to see any insects on their on their plants, including aphids, especially aphids. They're kind of a notorious garden pest. However, they're just kind of part of gardening and really it's pretty easy to just wash them off in your salad spinner. Join us next time. I think we're going to be talking about catch crops. We're going to plant a catch crop here um, where this arugula is that has gone to seed and uh, we'll talk about the importance of kind of those short season crops next time. See you later.